So guys, today we have 10 pairs of luxury earrings to talk about and um, I will have the prices in US dollars and Malaysia ringgit on the screen for your easier reference. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jen and my channel is about fashion, uh, beauty and lifestyle. So if you're into this kind of stuff, we'd love for you to stay to the end of this video. If you happen to like it, do sub consider subscribing to my channel and also um, follow me on my Instagram. And um, so the topic of today is, as you can tell from the title, is part three of my luxury guide. Oh, sorry guide to luxury jewelry and today it's all about earrings and i am really really excited and um was looking forward to doing this because personally um i think out of all the jewelry pieces i love earrings the most because i think uh, i almost feel naked when i don't wear earrings and i think that it really completes an outfit and there's a saying in i don't know i think according to according to my korean friend earrings supposed to are supposed to make you look prettier because they are worn close to the face right so however earrings can be also very personal because it depends on your face shape your hairstyle and even your earlobe um shape and uh, you know how because some people uh the earlobes are quite narrow while i have quite a full earlobe i would say so really really tiny earrings don't look significant on my ears so i i tend to stay away from very very tiny earrings as you may guess so for today um you know before i got into luxury jewelry i used to be kind of overwhelmed there are so many brands you have cartier van cleef uh other two brands i'm going to talk about I'll also be talking about tiffany and co good news to some of my tiffany and co fans and also um bulgari so four brands and with 10 pairs of earrings in total so as you probably can guess i am going to start with van cleef so the way i've picked these earrings are based on how versatile they are whether they can be dressed they, these can probably be dressed or dress down depending on the rest of your outfit and also um, uh, the wear uh, basically how you know bas because you don't want your earrings to be sitting in the box right in your jewelry box the aesthetics of course I have some ranging from being very feminine to cool chic and I hope one day I'll have all pairs all the pairs of these earrings in my collection I do have one of them already that I'm gonna show you first so I am gonna start with Van Cleef first so Van Cleef is a very feminine brand etc and they love to use they had used a lot of stones mother of pearl carnelian which I have uh, also the gold guilloche hammered gold uh, malachite gray mother of pearl blue agate uh, you name it, they almost have it all, even though turquoise is much. I don't think it's really in production anymore, except for limited edition items. So for the first pair today, I want to talk about the vintage size Alhambra earrings. Mine are in white mother of pearl with a set in white gold in the classic Alhambra design. So the Alhambra line is probably the most classic line out of the entire uh, Van Cleef house. I mean, as, when it comes to jewelry, not the high jewelry, of course, very popular. And, you know, it's also supposed to be a lucky symbol uh, from the four leaf clover and also the arches of the Alhambra palace in Spain, hence its name. So I did do quite a bit of research as well as you know I love uh, reading up on this kind of stuff as most of my friends would know so uh, looking at this pair of earrings I think they're just the right size for a day-to-day -day pair uh, for work or for play uh, for you know more formal occasions you can potentially probably have this uh, with the necklace and with the bracelet as well and wear it in a set but on a day-to-day -day basis I think just the earrings already add a very very nice touch to any outfit and I chose the white mother of pearl uh, with the white gold because the white gold just made it sparkle a little bit more the gleam and I think the white gold uh, sides actually make the earrings look a little bit larger if you compare it next to an onyx pair with yellow gold then you can see the difference so I'll put it on for you to see it is um, it comes with 
uh, the closure like this and it actually does indicate if it's on the right uh, on the right ear or the left ear so this one is on the left ear as you can see there's a little um, there is that little extra metal here which indicates which ear is supposed to go on so it is fixed I'll put it on for you to see and I'm also I also found a lot of nice pictures and videos online so that you can look at them more as you can guess these would come in all kinds of stones and I only have the mother pearl now with white gold so I am looking to add the other stones soon but there are just so many designs and other brands to choose from it's probably not at the top of my priority so as you can see it is quite substantial even though it is just a vintage size and my earlobes are quite uh, big I would say they're full so um, yeah guys it is very very um, versatile I can wear it to work and it's not too much uh, for meetings and also interviews uh, whenever I do any uh, talks and stuff like that as well it looks very professional uh, yet it also goes uh, I also wear them on weekends sometimes definitely recommend the vintage size uh, VCA Alhambra for uh, one of your first pair of luxury earrings if that's what you're looking to get so do take a look at the website uh, for more pictures and um, yeah, on the VCA website uh, and I'll have the price uh, as well on the screen for this it is in US dollars about uh, 4,400 US dollars and 19,800 ringgit for this mother of pro pair uh, there will be slight variations in prices depending looking at the other stones and also if the skiyoshi is more expensive about 24,800 um, ringgit and that would be about 5,500 uh, 5, US dollars okay so still on the alhambra line we'll talk about the sweet alhambra so the sweet alhambra is basically just a smaller version as you can see from the screen of uh, the vintage size alhambra that you can see so the sweet size was originally designed for kids but then obviously adults took a liking to it because it is really cute uh, and um, i think it's great if you just want something very very subtle but still very classic vca and um it also comes in various stones carnelian etc i'm showing you the one in rose gold uh and it does uh if you want to buy the bracelets and the bracelet and the matching pendant you can do that as well so i think um the sweet size is also a great go-to for your first pair of luxury ear earrings if that's what uh, you're looking for in terms of pricing of course it is lesser than the vintage size it is 11,900 ringgit and about $2,600 US dollars so it is pretty um, I would say a good entry price even more so than the vintage size but uh, because I felt like my earlobes are quite um, big so I felt like the sweet size looked really really small even though the butterfly one looked really cute so maybe who knows uh, one day I might go for that okay so now going into number three I have also something from Van Cleef which is the Frivol line so I don't talk about a Frivol line that much but I actually personally really really like the aesthetic it is obviously uh, floral it is uh, the, its aesthetic seems to be very light and almost um, uh, ethereal and then it is um, kind of very fairy like in my opinion because the petals of the flower is also uh, heart shaped if you look closely and it is mirror polished gold so it does reflect like very very well uh, the one that the pair I'm talking about today would be the mini version it does have a either uh, an emerald or a ruby and I think diamond as well in the middle of the flower so it's a very subtle bling bling but uh, when you move it does catch the light so I think it is also a great uh, first pair of earrings if that's what you're looking for in terms of pricing it is um, 3500 US dollars and it is 15,800 ringgit so the pricing is also quite close to the vintage size of Alhambra so if I had to pick between the two I'll still pick the vintage Alhambra first but then if you already have stuff from the Alhambra line I would highly recommend for you to consider the Frivo line as well 
So uh, it is one of the most 3D pair of earrings I have seen among the luxury jewelry lines and I think it's definitely um, cute and especially if your earlobe is smaller than mine, I think it'll look a lot more significant on you. Okay, so that's all from Van Cleef that I want to talk about today, which would be the three pairs. So now let's go to Tiffany and Co, guys. So I only have two pairs from Tiffany. So um, Tiffany, I think recently, or rather past few years, I feel like they have extended their reach to a lot, uh, a lot more clientele, right? So Tiffany and Co, as you know, is also a very classic uh, brand, American uh, luxury jewelry brand, and it has very successfully gotten campaigns up with the uh, younger people with the k-pop uh, stars etc so it's managed to be uh, i feel like it has managed to be a lot cooler and uh in in the last few years when at one point it seemed to be dying off a little bit uh, but anyway i'll be talking about its regular jewelry not the high jewelry as usual since this is a guide for beginners so Okay, one of the pairs of earrings I've always had my eye on would be the Hardware Link earrings. So it comes in a few versions, right? It, it comes in silver, it comes with uh, in rose gold without diamonds, and one with the diamond as well. So I'm going to put all these pictures and videos that I use quite a lot of time, I spent a lot of time on to find uh, on the screen for everybody's easier reference. So the one without diamonds, I feel is already more than enough and makes a, a, a statement already on a day-to-day -day basis. Goes well with work clothes and uh, when you're going out, dinners, etc. Because it is quite a, a substantial pair of earrings. It is 17,000 ringgit uh, without the diamonds and that would be about 3,700 US dollars. The silver pair is obviously much, uh, it's a lot uh friendlier in terms of price it would be 8300 ringgit which is 1700 us dollars and finally the one with the uh, diamonds would be 69000 ringgit obviously quite expensive that's the price of my birkin and 15000 us dollars so um the hardware range is probably not my usual style but just because of that i feel like it adds a great kind of a juxtaposition to my more i guess feminine style so i think it looks great as well on most people so i've tried it on before but at that time i wasn't too sure about it so now i kind of regret because obviously price has increased i think i first tried it on last year so it is still kind of on my radar but if i do buy it it'll probably be the rose gold 18 karat one without um, diamonds and actually the stock is very low you must kind of pre-order as well so i'll show you really really nice pictures um, um uh, which can kind of give you a better idea so the second pair from tiffany and co would be the tiffany t line which would be the bar earrings so it's uh drop earrings uh but the bar is actually not dangly so it's um I like the shape because it kind of elongates your face so I feel like my face is um, not long not the long type it's slightly rounder I feel so I kind of think that you know uh, the drop earrings and dangling earrings do suit me a, a lot better than for example hoop earrings so as usual it does come in a few metals um, it comes in rose gold 18k rose gold or yellow gold that without diamonds it's about 6450 ringgit so very very reasonable price that is 1400 us dollars that they do have a version with the earrings down the bar um, that would be 22400 ringgit and 4900 us dollars and uh, even though it's such a um a very delicate pair of earrings definitely it does catch the light when you move and i love the simplicity and the i guess more unique pair more unique design when it comes to tiffany and co so those are my two picks from tiffany and co if i had to choose one i'll probably choose the hardware earrings but you know if you're just kind of dipping your feet into tiffany and you don't want to spend too much i think the tiffany t-bar earrings are also a great bet uh, I feel like Tiffany & Co is on average a bit cheaper than Van Cleef & Cartier, the French brands. Uh, and I still, I totally love the um, the designs that they've been coming up with. And I feel like Tiffany T doesn't get enough attention uh, on YouTube or maybe because I just haven't been, I just have not been looking uh, for it. 
So the hardware collection is supposed to be a bit uh, rebellious uh, in a chic way. So that's what I love about it. And I think these two pairs would definitely, you definitely get a lot of wear out of these two. And they definitely, um, you know, deserve a place in your collection. And I hope to have both of them in mind soon. Okay, so now it's time for Cartier, guys. So I have three pairs from Cartier. You probably can guess um, what I would have. One is, let's start with the love earrings. So if you remember from my bracelet video, I did try on the um, love bracelets, the small and the regular one. But you know, me being me, I don't really like scratches on my jewelry, especially such an expensive piece. I actually th thought to myself that maybe getting a pair of love earrings you still get the kind of the concept the symbolism behind the love line right which is uh, to me now i'm interpreting it as self-love right if you get it for yourself so obviously on your ears they probably will not get scratched it'll be quite difficult to scratch them unless you put them together with other jewelry like slightly carelessly uh, in terms of pricing it's actually pretty good as well i chose the goldilocks pair that's why i like to call them because on the cartier website it doesn't really uh, differentiate they have a smaller version the smaller one and this is kind of the one in the middle hence goldilocks and there is a thicker pair as well so the one that i have chosen i'm um, showing you on screen is 9000 ringgit without diamonds and it is uh, 1900 us dollars so it is a pretty good price for a classic cartier pair of earrings it does come in a version with three diamonds on each side totaling 0 0.11 carats that would be a uh, 20,500 ringgit and 4,500 US dollars. So um, if it were me, I'd probably get the one without diamonds for the love earrings because if I wanted to spend that much, maybe I'll get the thicker one. Um, but that's just me. But do remember that my earlobes are quite generous, so they can take the larger one. So some people's earlobes might be a little bit thinner, so you must really try on earrings before you decide to buy them. Or if you do order them online, make sure you can return them or exchange them if they don't like look great because I feel earrings you really have to try on. Okay, moving on, we have the JUC Just On Clue earrings, which is the nail design, which is one of my favorite ones. I wear my JUC small bracelet all the time. So these would be matching earrings and I have tried them on before. So I'll put pictures of me trying them on and other and other models as well. <clears throat> so the one uh, the one I'm recommending again is the pair with no diamonds, 13,400 ringgit and 2,900 US dollars. With diamonds, it is 29,200 ringgit and 6,400 US dollars. For the purpose of the prices I've prepared, I've actually prepared only the prices for the actual earring that I'm recommending. Whereas as you can tell, each of these designs usually have a more luxe version with a lot more diamonds or sometimes it comes in silver if it's Tiffany and Co. But obviously Cartier does not sell silver. Okay, so the next one is Clash. So Clash at first when it just came out, I think about three or two years ago, three or four, I think. Um, I wasn't too into it at first, but now it's quickly becoming a Cartier icon and I'll have to say that I totally grew to love it as well. Um, so Clash actually is something that you can dress up or down. It looks great uh, with your um, really, um, I guess, cool outfits and casual outfits even and also even uh, with an evening dress as you can see when I'm placing um, the videos, the Cartier campaigns on my screen, on the screen. So it definitely has an edgy feel in terms of design, I, I think. And however, the physical item itself is also very, um, it was slightly surprising, right? Because the studs look very sharp, but if you touch them, they're very comfortable and they actually move a little bit, even though they're in individually fixed. So whenever um, the wearer moves, right, the uh, piece of jewelry actually moves a little bit, which just makes everything really, really um, sophisticated looking and uh, obviously very, very well made being Cartier. And in terms of pricing, the one, the pair is without diamonds, 18,900 ringgit, so more expensive than the other pairs that do not have diamonds. But then again, you use a lot more gold for the clash and it is 4,100 US dollars. 
so i think this is definitely yet another icon at the house of cartier and if i were to pick something from clash it would be the earrings or the ring uh, not so much the bracelet because i think it's a slightly a bit too much i mean for me for my style so i have three pairs from cartier and i hope <laughs> you will enjoy the pairs that I've picked so far and do like me guys if you notice right for today I actually prepared notes because I have 10 pairs of earrings to talk about so I didn't want to like ramble on and on so now I'm actually <laughs> I've actually finished 8 already so I'm pretty glad about that do share with us if you have any thoughts or if you own any of these earrings I would love to have all these like except for the sweet maybe because of my um, earlobe size um, the rest I would definitely love to own um, in my collection so bulgari is the last brand that i want to talk about and you probably can guess i picked the divas dream collection so there are two pairs actually from the divas dream collection that i think can be um considered so firstly the first one would be the one that is not a drop it's just kind of a piece of the fan on your ear and you can see me trying it on i tried on the one with the malachite and there's a tiny diamond at the top that would be 2400 us dollars unfortunately i did i doesn't have a price it doesn't have prices from the malaysian website in malaysia ringgit but if i recall correctly it would be about slightly less than ten thousand ringgit for that pair and the next pair is probably something that you've seen a lot more if you watch k dramas on netflix you know the actresses all seem to love wearing um diva stream earrings from bulgari and i think it's actually placed it's a placement so it is twenty nine thousand sorry twenty nine hundred us dollars the one i'm talking about would be the mother pro pair so it has the more generous size fan um dropping down very um feminine and um, it comes in malachite mother of pearl also comes in pave diamonds obviously that would be a lot more expensive carnelian and i think also in pink opal i've seen those in store before so um price is 29 uh, hundred us dollars and if i recall correctly in malaysia it would be about uh, 12,000 ringgit so it's not sometimes it's not a direct conversion just because there are taxes etc um, so I've tried my best to find the latest prices so it might differ a little bit in your country uh, when you try to convert from US dollars so to me the Divas Dream collection is probably Mm, it's actually very unique in my opinion and the way they use the stones is very different from Van Cleef. Uh, obviously the fan like shapes are kind of like uh, reminiscent of the uh, Roman um, the Roman court apparently so it's the, you, can, you can imagine the flowy dresses uh, draping dresses flowing silhouettes that's the kind of the inspiration that Bulgari used for the Divas Dream collection and yeah I think these are priced quite reasonably and uh, out of all the brands I've talked about today, Van Cleef, Cartier, uh, Tiffany & Co and Bulgari, I would say that Van Cleef seems to be the most expensive one. This is based on my experience not only buying but reading and also talking to the essays and also um, shopping around so much, right? And um, yeah, and also just, in, I mean, I don't think I've shared this, but my mom used to be in the wholesale jewelry line. So I do know a thing or two about um, jewelry. So when I was a kid, I did uh, kind of tag along on her business trips to Hong Kong, etc. for jewelry fairs. Very interesting, even though I didn't really get to go in, but I did get to um, hear all kinds of interesting conversation and see the stones myself. Um, yeah, guys, so this um the 10 pairs of earrings that i've shared today i feel are very uh useful from a kind of uh versatile level like how versatile they are it goes with many different outfits and also you can wear it in the daytime and nighttime you can be dressed up or down in terms of um the pricing they are still reasonable from a luxury jewelry point of view of course you can't really compare it to regular jewelry and I think for luxury jewelry, we're also paying for the design and paying for the workmanship and also sometimes the history uh, behind it because I know there are people who say, you know, you can get a similar looking ones for much cheaper, but to be honest, um, it just feels different even if it looks exactly the same. I mean, I haven't found 
I haven't seen copies that look exactly the same. I'm talking about actual real jewelry stores that, you know, are inspired by Van Cleef designs. I see that a lot. They actually look pretty nice on its own, but because I know it's a Van Cleef design, I, I just can't, right? And actually, it's not that cheap. I'm talking about some of the Hong Kong jeweler, jewelry houses, uh, jewelry shops that has good uh, craftsmanship as well, but somehow it's just not as good as the um, original. In this case, I'm talking about Van Cleef. If you own any piece from Van Cleef, I'm sure you would agree that the quality is really, really good workmanship wise, etc. And after sale service. So guys, I hope you enjoy uh, part three of my guide to um, luxury jewelry for beginners. I really enjoyed doing the earrings um, research etc and putting together this video. I hope you like it. I hope you find it useful and if you have any ideas on more videos for me to do, do let me know. I kind of find that I actually have to do more work for this kind of videos compared to just an unboxing video. So I hope this adds value. Uh, to you and when you're going shopping and kind of thinking what to buy because I've been thinking about that recently as well so this video also helped me and I was like oh wow I didn't know that this pair is this price pretty good so I might probably want to get a pair another pair soon one of the 10 here uh, sorry one of the eight since I already have this and no sweet so guys I hope you have a wonderful day and do check out my other two guides part one on luxury bracelets and part two on luxury pendants and today um yeah and my playlist of course for luxury jewelry so um do share with me what you think and I will see you really really soon bye <music>